Okay, God bless you. Hello, good morning, beautifuls and beloveds. I hope you're all doing well. Whatever that means to each and every single one of you, I don't know. I don't even know what it means for me anymore. Oh, that's an issue. We're very chill and low key here. We like to just roll as we go along, I guess. I don't know what to say. Um, so good morning, and I, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope I find you well. So I don't really like to do Christian religious messages because I have issues with the church and everything. I don't have issues necessarily with God except for, you know, hey, why you know, letting this all happening type of stuff. Normal human relational God things. And, um, oh, beautiful one. That needs to be, and then that needs to be. Oh, actually, no, you can leave it like that. That'll start filtering out here, too. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, my wonderful life. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing one. I, I'm going to do a little bit of one. Why? Why do I feel motivated to do this? Well, because I've been hearing a lot of things, and I hate to be critical of my fellow brethren, but this is some weird stuff going on check me, correct me if I'm wrong too, of course, but I, I think that maybe I, I might be right with this. Now, I'm calling this series of episodes, videos, whatever you want to call them, The Guilt Gospel. There's a reason why I'm calling it this, because I'm seeing some strange things happening in Christianity, and it's one of the reasons why my family and I, let me clarify, we have not renounced our faith, faiths by any means. We just are seeking to go to the right church. I used to love going to church, but it's gotten wacky, like very strange, to the point where it is too much work and effort to go to church because everything that's coming from the pulpit, we're having to constantly check, which is a good thing. God says, be a Berean. That's New Testament. The Apostle Paul says, check everything. Just don't take people's word for it. Whether it's coming from a pulpit, from a news source, it doesn't matter. Even me, check me. Help me understand even what I'm saying better. Um, it's all good. You have somebody that says, don't check me, you got to suspect that something's going on and wrong. We're fallible creatures. Unless you're God himself, we are fallible. So anyway, we just, and it's a tragedy. I, you know, I love people. I love doing ministry and the work of God, but not so much anymore because really there's, we're finding not just one little thing that's wrong. You know, you have your 80% person who you're supposed to be okay marrying, right? Well, we can't even find a 50% church. <laughs> that is how bad. I think that the Lord would consider that a state of apostasy. Thank you, beautiful. So, is it spicy? Very. Ah, the key to clearing up my sinuses. So, uh, we need to know what to do, and so do you, if you're in a similar situation. I do know that a lot of the places that we've attended have had droves of people leaving. Oh, here goes the discomfort already. <laughs> I think I need to figure out how to strengthen my core to help support my back and my neck. And then when I have migraines, I can't really exercise too well. Sometimes dancing would clear it up, but therein lies the problem. I can only dance for, as you saw, for just a few moments, and then I'm like in severe pain. So, hmm, very interesting. Okay, any helpful hands? I'll take, um, what do I do? Okay, guilt gospel. I wrote this out to help me stay on track because lately I have so many things of, uh, you know, sensory input, having to deal with so many different things, and it's amazing how the multitasking is just happening. I'm like, okay, what do I do? I'm so scheduled. This is what I do for the next 10 minutes. This is what I do for the next hour. This is where I gotta go. It's that, it's that insane right now. 
All right, so let's deal with this. I am also, look at my videos, I have once said there are many paths or pathways to God. I've said it in private, I've said it in public, I've said it to people, I've said it to people I've witnessed to. And um, let me clarify what I mean when I say that. And let me also, if I may uh, presume, not speak for other people, but hope for the best in other people and hope that this is what they mean. But I don't know. Let's find out. So what is meant when I say there are many paths to God? Well, I can witness and testify of the fact that people I know found God in many different ways. I found God on the day I got married. <laughs> Who knew? And it was not planned. It was not what I wanted to do. Um, but, and I'm talking, when I say find God, I mean really not just be, okay, I'm just Jewish or I'm just Catholic or I'm just this because that is what my family did. That's what I was raised in and that's how I was taught. I'm talking about a real heart change. I'm talking about a relationship and not just where do you put your butt? What seat is it in and what building is that seat in? Okay. I'm talking about complete consecration to the Lord and all that 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 entails. I'm not giving a sermon, but uh, I need to clarify some things. And uh, when I'm saying many pathways, like I was saying, it means that people can be led to God in many different ways. There's no right or wrong way. Some people were watching Billy Graham on TV or listening to him on the radio. That would be two different pathways using God's voice speaker, you know, God's hands. We're all like God's hands in a sense when we're working for him. Because how else is the message of the good news, the gospel, going to get across unless we help deliver it in some way? Here's the Bible. Here's this. Here, let me talk to you. What happened to you? Oh, you lost your mom. You lost your dad. Yeah, it sucks and I don't think God knows what he's doing just like you do, but you know what? Hey, who are we to say? Uh, and I'm not being flippant on this. I am just showing you my humanity and how I struggle too. Showing your humanity like this is not a sin. But see the different pathways. Different. There are so many path, billions of pathways to God. Okay. Be clear on this. I thought it was clear, but apparently people are saying it's wrong. So let me just clarify this. Okay. Here we go. So my little handy dandy outlines here. Paths to God many paths there are there are many paths to god however point b let's clarify this this is only one door the scriptures say jesus i am the way i am the truth i am the light i am the only way not i'm not saying me that's what he's saying red letters get a bible you'll get it <laughs> um so here's the thing i have seen and heard a lot of people um via video or being in the presence of going to church or saying if you say there are many pathways to God you are like really wrong well okay without playing semantics and splitting hairs this is what I mean I can't assume or presume what other people mean but I would like to presume and assume that they possibly mean what I do and that they're not all in a state of apostasy or wolves in sheep clothing so, yeah, that's what I mean. Go ask these other people what they mean. That's what I mean. They're really, I look at testimonies and I could tell you my testimony, like I said, I met the Lord and had the heart change in my life on my wedding day. My, our son was four, it was March 20 something, sixth or I don't know, we have it documented. And he was a, a child and he was just, it, it was like a no-brainer, no big to-do event. We were just sitting around in the living room and I thought, wait a minute, I wonder if I should do this with my child and ask him if he would like to know who Jesus is and have a heart change. And it was so sweet, so simple, so quick, and it was like, yeah, and he shows the fruit of a real born-again Christian, beautiful human being. Uh, my husband, uh, similar, similar story. Uh, my mother-in-law, my mom, my, you know, it took death to 
<laughs> for my mom. And unfortunately, that was her pathway. I'm like, ah, but better that than not. And yeah, so look, those are just what, four or five different pathways. But there was only one door, okay? That is scriptural, that is mentioned in the Bible, and I've heard so many people try to, but fine, correct me, because I could be wrong too. And so it prompted me to like, wait, what am I really trying to say? What is the actual factual truth of this? Okay, so there you have it. If you want to split hairs and do the semantics thing, there you go. True. There is only one door, but true, there are many pathways to God. You can get there in many different ways, okay? Does that make sense here? Let me draw a diagram. <laughs> I'm not trying to belittle anybody, but let's really be clear. So let's pretend that this is a door and all these little lines here are all the different pathways. I mentioned my pathway was on my wedding day, uh, my our son living room incident. My husband's similar. Uh, obviously, I wasn't there. My mother-in-law was similar. My mom had her death bring her to the realization. They're all right. Nothing is wrong with either of those pathways. And every every one of us has to decide at some point and it's never too late the thief on the cross was one pathway he had uh, didn't he murder too I'm pretty sure it was pretty bad news for him and he was being condemned and judged by man rightfully so or not I don't know I I don't I, I just don't like death even if somebody would quote unquote deserve it I it's just I just don't like it for anybody, whether they die natural causes, accidents, or the law puts them there, I don't like it. I just love people that much, but what can I do? Okay, so the thief on the cross, he, he was, Jesus was in between two similar types of judged human beings that were sentenced to death. Jesus's crime was he loved everybody. <laughs> really, if you want to boil it down to that, that was his crime, which is no crime at all. Really, it's ridiculous. Um, but nonetheless, uh, he, he died an innocent man, and that's how it had to be. The propitiation had to be completely innocent, which uh, as human beings, he was not just a human being. He was God in the form of a human being. Nobody else can martyr like he did. Nobody, because none of us are that. Okay, so you have Jesus in the middle, two thieves on the cross. You have an example of guilt and guilt. One led to death and one led to life. Does that make sense? God always shows right, uh, excuse me, wrong and right. He always gives that balance so we can see you know how I make the list this is a sign of Satan this is a sign of God or this is a sign of satanic behavior this is a sign of godly behavior very very simple <laughs> just go through the list if somebody is doing all these things up, 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 I think it's this and check with them and say hey look you're behaving this way let's bring you over on this side right same thing with the godly behavior very easy to do uh, and if they have a mix, then, you know, you got to get with them and say, okay, you're confused <laughs> and confusing me. But get back to the point here. God always provides that. You have uh, Judas who, who hung himself. That was the guilt that brought about death. And then you have the guilt that brought about life. That was Peter. There's always the same thing in the Bible where you have the issue in the middle, in this case it was Jesus being put on the cross, and then you have the examples. What an amazing wealth of information to say, uh, this is your litmus test. This is how you can judge rightfully so. Two, there's more examples with one incident. Jesus on the cross is one incident. So you have the thief that did not go into paradise because he did not repent, and then you have the thief that did repent 
and went to paradise in heaven with Jesus. And then you have on this side that Judas hung himself from the guilt. And then you have the thief on the cross that said, I mean, you have a Peter that said, I denied you how many times, but I'm guilty. I repent. Please forgive me, Lord. So condemnation, forgiveness. God always provides the opportunity, and that is in scripture too. I will provide a way out for you when dealing with sin. So how much more does a righteous person have when they're in a situation that they didn't sin that God will provide a way out for them as well? Just throwing that in there as a little bit of insight. But, okay, so there, there, are, there are many pathways that are there. You have the thieves on the cross, which was another pathway, but the door was right there quite literally so in these two thieves' cases, or condemned people's cases, uh, man condemned. One redeemed himself, one did not. And it didn't re he didn't redeem himself, he accepted, which led to Jesus' redemption of him. Please don't misunderstand me, okay? Sometimes I say these things and people are like, well, you said people can redeem themselves. No, it's not what I meant. Here we go, with splitting hairs and semantics. So. Let's clarify this. Okay, so do you understand that? And then, I just, you know, please, I have no patience anymore with a lot of things. Why? Because of the situation and the climate that we find ourselves in. You've seen what we've been going through. So, you know, please, really, I'm behaving very well considering. And I, I'm not going to let people put false guilt on me but people are trying to, especially these corporations. So I'm doing this basically for those who are witnessing. I This is basically my threshing floor that I'm living out in public. How am I handling this? I'm flipping people off, <laughs> you know? Hey, that's the worst of what I'm doing. Not too bad, huh? That's the worst of it. I have to have an outlet that is not gonna cause harm. You, you know what I mean? Because this is this is beyond duress. Let's say this, it's beyond stress, it's beyond duress. You know what the difference is? But both of them, okay. It's all good. Next, all are God's children. I've said this, you've heard me. I'm not gonna say I'm guilty of it because there's nothing simple or wrong of it. But I have said it, I'm owning my words. What do I mean? I won't presume or assume other people meant the same thing, but really, let's clarify this. I have no problem with this. Uh, point A in my handy dandy outline here. What do I mean when I say we're all God's children? Well, I'm gonna clarify this so those who are being a little too particular, but maybe rightfully so. Maybe you're right to be very particular in criticizing and saying that's not right. B. Okay, I'll clarify. We are all creations of God, or we are all God's creation instead of children. Does that make you feel better? That's what I mean. And if you look at it, when a person like me, and maybe you as an artist, we are creating things, they become your surrogate children in a way. Yes, I teach. Not too much currently, I'm trying. I can sit in a chair and teach a little bit. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I try. I'm doing rehab with my dancers, those of us who are injured, and you know what? It's in everybody's best interest that I get healed, so I am doing my job. I'm trying here. But I even consider my dancers my children in a sense. Not in a possessive way. No, I let them go when they want to. Even though I hate when they go, it makes me just so sad because I, I really do. I get attached to my love people. But but, and not that I'm creating them, but, you know, in a sense, I kind of create them to be what we need them to be for the moment when they're performing, not to take away who they are. And the same thing when we are saying that, um, how can I, uh, like, okay, I write books, too. I create characters, and you might do pottery. Wow, what a beautiful thing, because you know, you are also doing something that God does with human beings. He fashions us like, like pottery, like clay, you know? So 
maybe your pottery is also a surrogate child of yours. So in a sense, yeah, we are all God's children because we are all his creation. Now here's where you can split hairs again with the semantics. This, this is, look, God created angels and demons. And then they made a really dreadful choice. <clears throat> Lucifer, Satan. His name changed. When he changed his persona, his name changed. He changed his name. He changed his own name. He was a beautiful angel. All demons are angels. It's just that it's clar clarified and classified that they're demons because now they serve the evil one. Okay. Does it does this make any sense? So. I'm calling this whole message that I'm talking about the guilt gospel because sometimes I hear, like I said, from the pulpit, whether I'm there personally or if we're listening as a family trying to find something to feed us, but you know what, maybe we're shepherds. I have no desire to be one personally in the church because, I, look, I have too many faults and flaws. Gee, wouldn't that look nice? They say, hey, have you seen her videos where she's flipping people off and swearing? Yeah, that'll go big in a church. I know. <laughs> but you see, I am like raw, real, uncensored, and I'm like one of these normal people who just love the Lord. Um, and it has been attracting more people to the gospel and more people converting because I'm not pompous. So I'm like, all right, I must be doing something right. But that's why I'm calling this one the guilt gospel because really, I, come on guys, you're standing up there giving the word of God. Sure, split hairs, but instead of splitting hairs to use as a weapon, why don't you split hairs to just clarify your own speech like I'm doing? And why don't you uh, just like knock it off? Because a lot of these people are stealing my words. Who have given it to them? I don't know these pastors. In one case, I did, and I'm like, okay, whoa, talk about access. And don't get me wrong, we love this gentleman. We love all of these people that we've known and the people we don't. I don't, you love them kind of like in a general sense, agape sense, but I'm like, ooh, not gonna go well for you. Um, and they're talking about <laughs> heresy and I'm like what do you think stealing my words claiming them as your own look I've said this once before if you are using my words you sir or madam are not listening to the Holy Spirit you're listening to me and I could be wrong what is that what does that say about you so like uh, it's cringeworthy isn't it um, okay and I'm sure my flipping people off is cringeworthy too I'm right there with you but uh, I'll be the first one to call myself out and all this stuff too. Okay, but, right? I mean, come on. Where am I wrong here? Next, riches are evil. And, you know, there are, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the health, wealth, gospel, the name it, claim it people and you know I'm not gonna knock them too much but they're wrong God never promised us a rose garden but neither should that be used against me by corporations to say see God never promised you a rose garden so honey your life is the way it is because this is what it says in the gospel well let me counter that properly to you facetious sarcastic SOBs and corporations who are trying to use the gospel of Jesus Christ against me. Yeah, he never promises anybody riches, but he also doesn't promise poverty either. <laughs> Look, Abraham, he plundered, let me back it up, God plundered on his behalf and rewarded Abraham, even though he was a faulty human being, which we all are, but God's got to use somebody. And, uh, he, he, he did it twice, you know, check it out in the Old Testament. It was the same thing Jew saying, oh, my wife is really my sister, you're mistaken, because he didn't want to get wiped out and killed. Was that cowardly? Well, I mean, I would have had something to say about my husband if he did something like that, and you guys who are, like, eavesdropping on us, know that I have often words with my own husband. 
you know, where you throw the foreskin on the, on the, the ground in a sense and say, uh, you know what, you were supposed to do this and you were falling down your uh, head of household duties. Well, God uses women and good women that aren't trying to usurp the husband position of leading the head of house by saying, hey, you did something wrong. It's, you know, it's a figurative uh, foreskin throwing on the ground. And I, I've done it all the time. Not all the time. A lot. <laughs> because when, you know, when things are not being led properly, I'm like, hey, let's do this right. Hey, let's do this right. Of course. And he holds me in check, too. So, um, you know, this whole thing about Abraham and Moses, you have to look at these things. Look at Moses. He freed. He was the deliverer. God always raises the one to deliver, to uh, to set people free. Look what I'm trying to do. I'm not claiming to be a deliverer. That's in God's hands, not a corporate hands, not law, not, not government. That's God's decision. But the same things happen. The evil corporations. Well, what were the corporations then trying to suppress the gospel, the true gospel, even though the gospel had not manifest in human form yet? It was suppressed constantly by government, by those who were afraid because they didn't want to lose out on the money that they were making, they didn't want to lose out on the control that they were purposely exacting upon their people. So God says, you know what, this has come out of hand. I'm going to raise the least likeliest person, <laughs> probably not happy with it, but you know, to do the job, to get this done. And, uh, you know, and I think that in a lot of cases in history, these people always had uh, an Aaron or a her, like Moses did, underneath, underneath their wings to gird them up. I have that too. Women have been used in the Bible. There's Deborah, there's Esther, there's so many beautiful women who were, who were used in the Bible. To bring about God's justice and his will. Some were very wealthy and some were not. So we need to stop looking at it as riches are evil and poverty is evil. That's what I'm talking about here, the guilt gospel. That people who don't have Christians best, behave, uh, best um, interest in mind will behave in such a way to drop a guilt bomb as some of these pastors that we've been uh, listening to in search of a good church, uh, been been saying no. the The Bible says it is the where is it? It's the love, right here. See, the love of riches is evil. Because if riches are evil, then you have to go back and say. God, you were wrong with blessing Abraham and Moses and all of the others that they represent and all the others that are mentioned by name in the Bible. So that's wrong too. So how dare you guys guilt people into believing if they seek restitution, and that's exactly what Abraham and Moses had in a sense. They were given restitution not only for their suffering, but on behalf of those that they were shepherding forward. They weren't considered necessarily like pastors pastors but they were leaders they were shepherds they were protectors they were bringing God's people to a place that God needed them to be to further his will to bless his people what a challenge what a job it's never done this is never going to be done none of these people Abraham Moses could rest on their laurels and say job complete God can say your job and your position was complete and you did it well done, good and faithful servant. But until the end of time, meaning uh, resurrection, final judgment, all of that, the uh, second coming, call it what you will, this is never going to be done until then. But everybody had their place, whether it was a huge shining vase on its big mantle or a little saucer. It's all still to God, huge, shining, and just as important. Okay, humanity judges the big shining vase as the best or the better.